Now for the f next few weeks we are going to concentrate on Baroque music. And I want to start this lesson with a beautiful example of the architecture of that time. You will see it's elaborate, it's big, we have high domes, you see the gilded, and um, we have lots of embellishments, ornaments. Look at all the ornate pillars that I have. It's really beautiful. Here we have another example of the architecture. And we see little niches here. Okay, we have paintings. We have lots of gold. We have the columns. It's big. And we see the domes there. And it's, it's elaborate. Here we have a painting of that time. Detailed, beautiful colors. Another painting of the time. See the detail, beautiful colors again. And we'll discover now why paintings, the visual arts, architecture, how this relate now to music, the Baroque music. Baroque music, 1600 to 1750. The word Baroque means imperfect bull. So it's not perfect. From the Portuguese world Baroque, and it was first used in connection with the highly ornamented style of architecture and art in the 17th century. Centuries later, when critics put a name to this extravagant time, the word Baroque was used mockingly. So they actually made a mockery of this time um, and period because it was so extravagant. Today it is descriptive and it describes the period of music from the birth of opera and oratorio to the death of one of the best Baroque composers, J.S. Bach. Now this um, recording started with some architecture and paintings, but this is now another example where you see the Royal Chapel of King Louis XIV of France. And you can see lots of the features that we will discuss now we see in this painting. The architecture of the time encompasses many features that we also find in the music of the Baroque era. Complicated shapes, breaking out of the box, extreme ornamentation, often gilded with gold, large elliptical forms, curved lines replacing the classically straight lines of the Renaissance, twisted columns, grand stairways, high domes, ornate open pediments, interest in light and shadow, decorative sculptures often in niches. So it will be quite interesting to do a Google search and find some beautiful Baroque churches, cathedrals and Baroque paintings of that time because I know that the influences of the paintings, the architecture, the art of that time had a huge impact on the music. So I will understand the music better if I understand all the, the, the other arts. The music of the Renaissance to our ears sound quite strange because they didn't have major and minor scales like we know today. They worked with a system of modes. Now we see three there. And you will see the first one looks very familiar because that is the key of C major. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that's my Ahodian mode, the major scale, scale as we know it today. Now, if I do theory, I know that between C and D, I have a whole tone. Between D and E, I have my whole tone. E and F is my half tone, because E major actually needs an F sharp, so that's my half tone, my semitone. F to G, whole tone, G to A, whole tone, A to B, whole tone, and B to C, half tone. So between 3 and 4, and 7 and 8 in a major scale, I have half tones. But what they did in the, the Renaissance is they took exactly the word, the notes of the Iodian mode and they just started the next one on the second note. So I have a D 
die, then the E, then the F, G, A, B, C, D. And that means that my 3, 4 half tone here moves to 2, 3. And my 7, 8 half tone there moves to 6, 7. So that's not a scale that we used to. The friction starts with that half tone there. And now the half tone is between 5 and 6. So it will be very interesting for you to play this, to hear the different modes. The Lydian one starts now on the 4th. F, G, A, B, C. Now there I have my half tone between 4 and 5 now. And then E, F, 7 and 8 I have a half tone. So they take exactly the right notes and start on a different note every time. So that was my scale. Dorian started on the second note, D. Friedrich started on the third note. Lydian on the fourth note. Mixolydian on the fifth. Aeolian on the sixth. That's the minor scale that we know today. A, B, C, D, E, F without the raised seventh, G, A. So it's just the minor scale without the raised seventh. Okay? And then the Locrian mode, where I start on the seventh note. So that's not a system that we know. I want you to try and play this on the piano. Um, go on YouTube and listen to some modes. By adding ac accidentals, the major and minor key system develop. Now, if I talk about an accidental, this is an accidental. Natural, um, flat, a sharp. And that's the major and minor key system that we know today and that we're also going to study in theory. So this is a very important Baroque thing, the major and minor system of keys that we know that was developed in that time. The 17th century also saw the invention of several new forms and designs, such as opera, sonata, oratorio, suite, fugue and concerto. Now, we are going to, in the next few lessons, you're definitely going to know all those words. The orchestra started to take shape, mainly in the strings, and the violins became the dominant instrument and most important in orchestras. So the violin section, they were the backbone of the orchestra. Some of the old instruments disappeared, for instance, viols. I want you to try and find a few pictures of the viols. Some of the vials, they were quite small, and I played it like a cello, but I had it on my lap. Other sections of the orchestras were not yet finalized. They had a flute, they had a trumpet, a natural trumpet without valves. They had um, drums, um, the, the kettle drums, but those, the woodwind section and the brass section and the percussion sections, those sections were not yet finalized. Composers of this period, I have a few Italians there. Vivaldi, Alessandro Scarlatti, Domenico Scarlatti, Corelli, Monteverdi, Bach, German, Handel, German. He moved to England later on, so the English also says that he is an English composer. We have the French composers Couperin, Lully, Rameau, and then Henry Purcell from England. It will be quite interesting to start listening to some of these composers. Okay. Um, set yourself a goal to listen to at least three a week of these composers and while you listen and try to get some of the characteristics of Baroque. Listen to the characteristics of Baroque. Now in this paragraph we've got three very important words. The first word that you have to know is monody. Monody is a single voice line supported by an instrumental bass line upon which chords were constructed. So I have a single voice and it is accompanied by chords and a simple accompaniment.
accompaniment. The word monody, I see in monody, I see mono, and mono means one. So if you have to write a definition for me of monody, look at that sentence. Monody is a single voice line supported by an instrumental bass line and chords. The voice line followed the natural speech rhythm of words, like we have now today. And the style of writing for the voice in the early Baroque was half singing and half reciting. And this is a recitative. And that's your next word. The meaning of a recitative is half spoken, half sung. So it's a style of singing. I fit in a lot of words. But the style of singing is it's half sung, half spoken. Okay. All the composer wrote down beneath a melody was a bass line to be played by a low stringed instrument. So this is the example that you see here. Um, I had my melody that was written out. I don't see this in the um, example now. This is the accompaniment. Only thing that was written out was the part for the cello. Okay. But he was not the only accompanist because you see there I have maths, looks like maths, and I have chords. That was not that was not written out. The numbers were written out. Okay, and this is a basso continuum. So the basso continuum is that line written out with the numbers. Okay, because the other players or the other player had to improvise according to the numbers that he saw. Okay, so they were very skillful. So the figures below the notes told them exactly the position of the chord. So if I have a C, I mean C major, I see I have no key signatures there, uh, I have a clear octave above C, so my chord is C, E, G. Here, 6 4 shows me that this is a second inversion because if I have D, 4 notes up is G and 6 notes up is B. So I have G, B, D, and the D is in the bass. It's not important, it's just a little bit of understanding because they never ask this. And this is a first inversion because E, um, they want me to play 6 notes above E as a C. So the chord is C, C, E, G. F, they have nothing at the bottom, so it is a clear F, A, C. G, a fourth above is C, so C, G, D to B. Because they tell me that that must be a suspension. 4, 3. And this must at the end be a G, B, D. And then C, E, G. So this is not something that we do today, but they were so skillful in, in doing this. So in this little paragraph, you've got three important words. Monody, recitative, and basso continued figured base that you have to explain. If you go to your Google Classroom and you have to fill in your form, let me quickly show you. I have a text box here, and I make a copy for you as student so when you see what is the meaning of the word Baroque and you want to fill in your answer, you fill in, in this block. So you start typing in that block. What is the difference between the modal system and the key system that we use today? You start filling in, in that block. Mention the new forms invented during the Baroque era. You fill in, in that block. Write a short definition of the following. You write it in that block. Monody, write in that block. Basso continue, write in that block. Listen to two compositions by any Baroque composer. You write in this block. And then you submit it. And that I will show you if you don't understand it. Just ask me when I see you for the lesson.